Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Good morning. morning. On the first day of our (laughs) day's fasting, I uh, I trust the Lord that you all had a good night rest and uh, and that uh, to be able to join us today. So today is the first day of our fasting, and I just wanted to share some things with us. Uh, and then give us some prayer points, you know, encourage us through his word. And then I'm going to then uh, lead us in some uh, prayer points. You know, this is the mid-year. You know, this is the half of the year. The first half of the year is already gone. Amen. And, And now we've just entered into the second half of the year. So oftentimes, you know, with time, you know, Jesus gives an invitation in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, 11, 28 in the New Living Translation. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. That is the promise of Jesus. He said, Wherever you are tired, wherever you are weary, um, whatever heavy burden you are carrying, in other words, whatever constitute as a heavy burden on you, uh, you 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 say, I will give you rest. In other words, your rest is found in my presence. I'm the one that will give you rest. So it's an invitation for us to come. The place of fasting the place of prayer is the place where we are refreshed, where we are renewed. Fasting is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, not just fasting, but fasting and prayer is a wonderful opportunity where God revives us, renews us, you know, from wherever we are tired from, maybe tired of life, tired of the uh, life struggles, daily living, daily life, all these things can wear us, disappointments, uh, delay, you know, when you are praying and trusting God for healing, it hasn't manifested yet, you uh, you pray for something and you are yet to see, that uh, can be an avenue where we get weary, another way where we get weary, uh, according to the book of um, Ezekiel, he said that Satan wants to wear the saints out, that he wants to wear them out. And the reason why he does that is make you so tired to the point that you quit, that you give up, that you mm-hmm. throw the towel. Oh, God. And mm-hmm. so the Bible said that, that the enemy wants to wear God's people out through discouragement, you know, by by causing you to become discouraged and, and, and want to throw up, wants to quit. So Satan wants to wear the sense out. And this has to do with the last day. The Bible says, when we begin to approach the second coming of Jesus Christ, Satan yes. is going to intensify things to wear you and I out. To oh, tired. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and to want to throw the towel and to want to give up. So one of the avenues where we can become weary and tired is, uh, you know, the enemy's attack, you know, orchestrating events to wear us out. Another area where we can become weary and despondent and discouraged is when you are in faith, when you are praying for something, the answer is yet to come when there appears to be a prolonged wait. I've been praying for this thing now, but it hasn't happened. You know, I haven't gotten a job. You know, so Satan uses the tool of discouragement, you know, to wear you out. So that's the reason why we need to fast. We need to pray so we can be refreshed, so we can be renewed, restored, from you know our weariness. So Jesus said the key or the answer to you finding rest is you come to me. You know, my presence is where you find rest, is where you find hope, is where you find refreshing, is where you find restoration 
It's in my presence. You know, the scripture says in, in his presence is the fullness of joy. Oh, yeah. Yes. God's presence enhances our joy, enhances the quality of our lives. Well, Jesus said, come unto me. Well, it means if you don't come to him, you are not going to find renewal. You are yeah. not going to find revival. You are not going to receive the refreshing you need. And I don't know about you, but we need refreshing and renewal for the second half of 2020. Amen. Amen. Where we have been wearied, where we have been weakened, where we have been God. discouraged, where uh, we want to throw the towel and stop keeping faith. We need revival. We need yes. renewal. We need mm -hmm. restoration. Hallelujah. We Amen. need to be strengthened. You and I, every one of us, we need to be strengthened. We need to be renewed. And Jesus said the answer is when you come to me, when you come to my presence. That's where you find re renewal. That's when you find revival. And as I talk to people every now and then, sometimes people are just discouraged, you know, discouraged about life, discouraged about one area or the other. And then on top of that, Satan wants you to think that God doesn't care about you. God is not looking out for you. And over time, people, you begin to see people drift away. You know, the ones faithful now stop being faithful. The ones on fire now begins. The one who used to praise and worship God, uh, they begin to hang their hearts. You know, in Psalm 137, the scripture tells us that we sat by the rivers of Babylon. And there we wept when we remembered our captivity. He said, we hung our, our, our harps. They took their worship instruments and hung them. Because you are saying, there is no point serving God. There's no point worshiping God. There's no point praying. It doesn't work. And Satan keeps selling people that lie. And then you see them drifting little by little back. Yeah. Is there any use for me to pray? And I've gone through that before in my life. You know, there was a time when back in Nigeria, I was pastoring this little church. I was so discouraged. Nothing was working for me. I was not seeing result. You know, the promises of God. I have received prophetic word, but I wasn't seeing any of it being fulfilled. And I remember that night. It was one night. I will never forget that night. And I just put both of my legs on the table in my living room, turned the light off, sat down there and just sank into depression. You know, the more I focus on my situation, the more I focus on what is not working, the lower I sunk, you know, and I needed revival. I needed refreshing at that very moment of my life. I needed because discouragement was creeping in and taking over. Well, the place of fasting, the place of prayer is the place where we receive a fresh re renewal and refreshing in our life. And I trust God that this week, as we fast, as we pray, as we seek the face of God, God is renewing your strength. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, the scripture says in the book of Isaiah, the popular fasting scripture, Isaiah chapter 58, that those who wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. Yes, the word yeah. renew there means to exchange our weaknesses for his strength. So <coughs> this week, I trust God that you're, you are going to be renewed. You know, Amen. Renewed. Hallelujah. But not only are you going to be renewed, but your faith in God. A lot of time, Satan attacks your faith. He attacks your faith uh, because your faith is your weapon to be able to get results. So he attacks your faith and he says, there is no mm -hmm. point of you trusting God. Uh, mm -hmm. You've been praying about this healing. It hasn't manifested yet. Uh, why should you keep praying? Why does he do that? He's attacking your faith. Well, you yes. see the condition of your finances You've been praying and you've been giving and you haven't seen results yet. What is he doing? He wants you to give up. That's why the scripture says, Jesus said that when the son of man comes back 
Will he find faith upon earth? Will there be people that will still be in faith and say, regardless of what happened, I still trust you. Like Job said, though he slay me, I will yet trust him. What he's saying is, even though I haven't seen immediate resolve and, and things are not happening yet, I'm still steadfast in my faith. I still believe God. God is still God. And I still believe him. And so I want to start today on focusing on God renewing our zeal, our prayer life, our love for God, our passion, our faith, you know. So Satan attacks your faith. Attach your faith because your faith is your ability to get results. And if it weakens your faith and if it cripples your faith and if it paralyzes your faith, then you lose the ability to get resolved. You know, mm -hmm. one of the areas where we can find refreshing is by praying in the Holy Spirit. You know, the scripture is I Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 talks about uh, this one. Yeah, Isaiah 28, verse 11. If you are there, I'm going to read it. I'll read from there. Um, uh, the King James Version. Let me read the King James Version. Isaiah 20, 28, verse number 11. So the place of prayer is the place of refreshing. The place of prayer is the place of renewal, of refreshing. Isaiah 28, verse number 11 says, For with stammering leaves, and another tongue will he speak to his people. Verse 12, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. Now, we see the word again that Jesus used in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 again. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Well, here, Isaiah say. This is how you find rest. That the, the way you find rest is with the stammering uh, leaves. What is that? That's prayer. That's praying in the Holy Ghost. Let me finish the verse. Verse 12 said, To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they will not hear. In other words, as I told them, this is how you find rest. You find rest in my presence. You'll find rest in prayer. You'll find rest in praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in with other tongues. This is how you renew yourself. This is how you experience revival. This is how you experience a refreshing. He said, I promise them the rest, but the way they experience this rest is with a stammer and leaves as they pray to me, as they spend time with me. This is how the weary find rest. You know? So as we pray, as we fast, as we seek the face of God, this is how God renews yes, us, God. God refreshes us, God re, you know, restores us, is <laughs> as we pray. You know, in Isaiah chapter 57, verse, uh, uh, let me look at that scripture, Isaiah chapter 57, it, verse 15. Isaiah 57, verse 15, also talk about this rest as well, that God um, wants to give to us. In Isaiah 57, verse 15, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. What is he saying? Uh, the, the place of fasting is the place of humility. Fasting is, uh, you know, uh, declaring my weakness without him and declaring my total dependence on him. That's what fasting is. Fasting is saying, God, I'm re depending on you. I'm relying on you. I'm trusting you. And the Bible says, 
This is how he revives the spirit of those who seek him. He revives the heart of the contract ones. When he say contract ones, he's talking about those who are in repentance, those who are saying, God, I'm sorry. Because the, the place of fasting is two things. We get to repent. We turn our hearts away from sin, from the world, and we turn our hearts towards him. We say, God, we, we repent. The word repent means to change your mind or to change your mind about a particular situation or about something God is telling you not to do. So repentance is having a change of heart because it's agreeing with God that God said this thing is wrong. And I say, okay, God, you're right. It is wrong. That's what repentance is. Repentance is turning away from my sin and turning to God. So that's two areas of repentance. I, I, I turn my back on sin, but I turn my face toward God. And we do that during times of fasting and prayer. We, we Another word for fasting is to draw closer to God. Fasting draws you and I closer to God. Yes, that's what it yes, does. God. We, we draws us closer to God. And I just felt that the first day of the fasting, especially in the morning, is for us to take some time, you know, to draw closer to God and say, God, draw my heart to you, God. Create within me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within me, like David would say in Psalm 51. And, you know, the song we sung yesterday, we sang yesterday was, God, if it is not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Whatever is, is in my life that is going on, that does not bring glory to you, that you are not pleased with, Lord, I'm giving you the permission to remove it out of my life. Hallelujah. Well, that's how revival comes. That's how restoration comes. That's how renewal comes to us. Yes. And that's how our faith is built up. It's as we pray and as we seek the face of God. And one of the scriptures is Jude 1.20. I always like the amplified version. Yeah. It's a building up yourself. Build your faith up. What I'm really praying during this fasting is that your faith will be strengthened. Faith in God. Faith in God's word. Your faith in God will be restored. Your faith in his word will be restored. The ability to believe God. Yeah, the ability to believe God. You know, as I'm talking right now, I'm sensing in my spirit that there are people whose faith has really been weakened. You know, and it's because they've been in a prolonged fight. You know, they've been in a prolonged fight. There's been a delay. And because of that, their faith has been weakened. But the scripture tells us that when we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, according to yes. Jude 120, he said, building yourself, building your faith up, build yourself up in your holy, your most holy faith. Then he said in the Amplified Version, he said, rise up higher and higher like an edifice. Rise up. So when we begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, you know, another thing I'm praying is that your prayer language will be restored because there are some people who it's been a long time since you prayed in the Holy Spirit. It's been a while since you prayed in the Holy Spirit, but that's your prayer language. You're supposed to be praying that on a daily basis. Every Amen. day. Every day you're supposed to be praying that. Every day you're supposed to pray in the Holy Spirit, whether you're driving in the car, whether you are, you know, on your lunch break, wherever you are, you get to pray in the Holy Spirit. That's what keeps you built up. That's what keeps you up. And uh, so what are the signs of revival? You know, what are the telltale signs that an, an, a believer, a believer's uh, spirit walk is renewed? Well, I have some things here. One is that you your desire for God's word is restored. When a believer is experiencing revival, a spiritual awakening, when a believer is burning for God, there is such a strong hunger and desire for God's word. I mean, when you are going through such moment, there is no way you go for days or weeks without being in the word of God, without opening the pages of God's word. When revival takes place, uh, one of the, what are the telltale signs of spiritual renewal? It's a desire for God's word, hunger for God's word. 
can that can get enough of God's word. You know, I will encourage you to read the book of Nehemiah, uh, chapter eight. Read the whole yeah. chapter. After seventy years, you know, when they were in captivity, nobody cared about God's word. The reading of God's word has become obsolete and. And nothing was happening, and people had turned their backs on God and His word, you know. And 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 so Nehemiah built the temple wall. And after building the temple wall in Nehemiah chapter eight, the Bible says they found the scroll. The scroll is God's word. The scroll has to do with Isaiah, the written word. Found the scroll. That tells you that the scroll was missing. The scroll was lost in their lives. They have become accustomed to living a life without being in the word of God. May we never become used to going for days without reading his word. May, may we never come to that place in our life where we are staying away from God's word has become our new normal. Whereby we can go for we can be on social media, we can we we can be on on all kinds of apps and things like that. Uh, uh, TV entertainment becomes much more attractive to us than God's word. I'm praying today that there will be a revival of God's word in our life, a revival of God's hunger for 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 God's word in our lives. So in the book of Nehemiah chapter eight, the Bible said the scrolls were found. And they began to read it. And the Bible said they stood up from morning till night. They did not sit down. They read the scroll. They read the word of God in Nehemiah chapter 8. And the Bible said they stood up all day long. They are women. They are children. Hunger was being restored. Hunger for God's word was coming back. Desire for God was coming back. And may I tell you something? You cannot separate God from his word. When I spend time yeah. with his word, I'm spending time with almighty God. Yes. When I yes, stay God. away from his word, I'm staying away from God. Because yeah, yeah. God and his word are inseparable. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So God and his word are inseparable. Every time I take God's word and I begin to read it, what am I doing? I'm drinking from the fountain of God's word. I'm, I'm ingesting God's word. That's God at work in me. I am praying that the Lord will ignite in us the desire for his word. Not only was the desire for his word restored, but there was such a reverence for God's word. The people, rest, they stood up all day long. They said, we want to hear God's word. You know, one of the things that pleased my heart as a pastor is when God's word is going on on a Sunday morning or on Wednesday night or fresh fire, and you have people just walking about everywhere like, that's not for me. That's a disregard and a disrespect for his word. When Almighty God is talking to us, Unless if we don't see the preaching of God as his word. But when the Bible reading is taking place, I've taught my son that. That son, when we are praying, we are not distracted. When God's word is being read, we respect God's house. We honor God's house. Yeah. I think over the years, we've lost respect for his word. I'm praying that reverence for his word will be restored back to us. Whereby we prize his word, we elevate his word, we value his word. David said that I appreciate your word more than my necessary food. More than anything, he said, he said, your word is so important to me. Your word is so valuable to me. He said, I have exalted your word above my daily food, above my daily meals. And I'm praying, that's going to be part of our prayer points this morning, that the Lord will res restore our reverence for his word, our desire for his word. We need that. We need uh, restoration in that very area in our lives. And then we also need humility on our part. Yes, we yeah. need humility, uh, brokenness, humility towards one another, humility towards the brethren. You know, doesn't the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if the people call by my name will humble themselves. The place of fasting is a place of humility. I, I'm praying that, that the Lord will help us, that God's word is more appealing to us 
than entertainment, than social media. Because can you imagine what we spend hours on the social media without even feeling it, but it's like, but we can go day one, day two, day three, without opening the word of God. And we are still comfortable. We don't see anything wrong with that. Something is wrong when we are more interested in entertainment than we do his word. Amen. Something Amen. is wrong. Here's another thing that happens again. Uh, you know, here's the thing that happens again when revival takes place. There's a passion for prayer. Yeah. Like we want to pray. There's a hunger for prayer. There's a desire for prayer. We are not looking for excuses to stay away from prayer meeting, but we are looking for excuses to go to prayer meeting because every time we appear before God, according to Psalm 89, he said, every one of them that appears in Zion, they go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. Yeah. Every time Hallelujah. we appear in God's presence, what happens? He takes us from one level of strength to another level of strength. Glory to God. God. Do we need it now for the second half of the year? I don't know. For the things God wants to do in your life, for the things God wants to do in our lives as a church, as a community, we need to be strengthening in our spirit, man. We need to be renewed in our inward man for the second half of 2024 in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen and amen. Another telltale sign of revival is unity among the brethren. We love yeah. each other. We walk in unity. There is no discord. There is no division. There is no, no back talking or, or talking negatively about brethren. But we have genuine love and concern for each other. Genuine concern for one another, for the community. We look out for each other. Other, you, you, I got your back. You got my back. There is no backstabbing. No part of the renewal, part of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The effect of that is unity. That the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. Yeah, love for the brethren. It. Love for the community. Love for to see the lost one. I can go on and on and on and share about telltale signs of revival. When a believer is experiencing revival. Tell, tell signs. We want to pray this very morning that God will renew us. God will refresh us. God will uh, restore us. God yeah. will renew us in our spirit, man. Hallelujah. Yeah. And there will be such an outpouring. There will be a restoration where there's despondency, discouragement, where we are weary. Our faith is renewed. Glory to God. When faith is renewed, no matter what the devil is doing, he does not stop me. God, even though he slays me, even though things are not working well i still trust him you know i still trust him i know he loves me i know he's working for me i know he will not abandon me in other words no matter how, what terrible thing you're going through you just keep declaring how my faith is in you god i trust you i believe you you are coming through for me you will not abandon me you will not leave me hallelujah Amen. even when things didn't go well lord i know you're coming through when one door closes Keep declaring, God, you're opening a bigger and a Hallelujah. better door. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Man, I'm already fired up just talking about Amen. this. Amen. Glory mm -hmm. to God. I'm already excited about this already. That's what I'm praying for you today. That the Lord will renew you. The Lord will refresh you. And the words of Jesus in Matthew 11, 28, come to me. Come, come, come to me. You that are, are, are stressed out. That's all the translations say that. You that are stressed out. You that are weary. You that are worn out. You that are tired. You that feels burdened with life activities. Burdened with one thing or the other. And he say, I will give you rest. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I will give you rest. Let's, let's go before God now. You can unmute your phone. You know why I wanted to unmute your phone? Because, well, some of you are at work, so you can leave it on mute. But if not, whenever you pray, it encourages the other person on the phone. Your neighbor is encouraged. They are strengthened. They are built. When somebody, when they hear your voice pray, when the other person hear your voice pray, then you know it recharges them. It ignites their own faith and their own prayer life as well. So I wanted to unmute your phone right now, and then we are going to 
pray. And we're going to begin with the invitation of Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Say, Lord, I'm coming to you today because I need you uh, to give me rest. You know, Lord, I'm, I'm carving. I've, I need to be renewed for the second half of 2024. Lord, I've been burdened down with this or bogged down with that. I've, I've, I'm so weighed down. I don't know why we're talking right now. There is a sister on this prayer call this morning that is so burdened, you know, is so burdened with financial care. I, I saw the lady, she's so burdened with, with, with financial care and she's so concerned about that. But here's what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. He said, if I care for the birds of the air, if I care for the lilies in the field, you are more precious to me than the birds of the air. If the birds of the air are not worried about provision, yeah. if the lilies of the field are not worried about provision, you are more precious to me than the birds of the air. And the Lord said to tell you this morning that your faith needs to arise now. Begin to declare, begin to confess it. Lord, I trust you. I believe you. You are my shepherd. You are my provider. In the midst of the financial challenges you're going through, God said, that you begin to declare with your mouth, Jesus, you are my shepherd. Jesus, yeah. you are my provider. Okay. But it's not just that sister yeah. alone. But if you're a businessman, you're a businesswoman, mm -hmm. and you're going through all the, and you are weary, and you are worn out, and you are tired in the area of the economics, in the midst of what is going on, God is saying, you begin to confess and begin to declare, Jesus, you are my shepherd. You are my source. You are the one that supplies every need in my life. And I have no lack, no matter the state of the economy, I am abundantly supplied. Hallelujah. And, and God wants you to even take some time and, and read the book of Matthew chapter 6 today. Read the whole of Matthew chapter 6. Read it. It's for you to renew your faith in him, especially in the area of provision. Let's go before the Lord right now. Say, Father, you. you've invited me and I've shown up now. I've come to you to give me rest. Hallelujah. I received supernatural rest. I received this refreshing from Almighty God that the scripture has already promised in Isaiah 57 and 15. The Bible said there is a refreshing that is coming from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Can we pray right now? Open up your mouth and say, Lord, renew me, renew my spirit, man. Hallelujah. Where I am tired, where I am weary. Come on, open up your mouth, unmute yourself, and let us pray together. Because you don't shout tired, and when somebody hears your voice, it sharpens them, it encourages them. Open up your mouth and say, Father, I'm coming to you at the beginning of this fasting. I'm asking you for renewal. Hallelujah. To renew you need the second half of 2024. Scripture says in Isaiah 58, those who wait upon the Lord, the Lord, as we begin this fasting, this week today, renew our strength of God. Where we are despondent, where we are discouraged, where we are tired, where we are worn out and weary, I pray this morning for a renewing of strength. We exchange our weakness. I pray for my brothers and my sisters this morning who may be discouraged, who may be weary, who may be worn out, or brought down and burdened with life difficulties and challenges. I pray right now for renewal for my brothers and sisters. I pray for encouragement right now. I hope for Come alive on the inside of you. It is an expectation that God will do what He says He will do. To renew your people this morning, refresh your people this morning, restore your church, restore the believers this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, the believer that has been discouraged, they are hope with you. For the believer that has been discouraged, I pray this morning, our hope will come alive. 
I pray for renewal. I pray for restoration. I pray for man. Every woman that has been wicked and weary by the difficulties of life, that they find hope in you today, that they find encouragement today in the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. They come against the weapon of discouragement. We come against the weapon of despondency. We come against Satan's weapon to wear the people of God out and to get them to throw the tower and to quit. Be renewed this morning. Be restored. Be strengthened in your inner man. In the supernatural name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, all your refreshing water on your people this morning. Let there come an outpouring of the water of the Holy Ghost upon the men, upon the women, the children, upon the people of God. Let there be a renewal this morning. Let there be a restoration in the name of Jesus. Let the young be strengthened. Let the old be renewed. Be refreshed this morning in the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for renewing us. All your Spirit, come on, open your mouth as a love for your Holy Spirit. Oh, a fresh new house, revive us, for us, a fresh us this morning, the second half of 2024. In the name of Jesus, those who are discouraged on their jobs, those who are worn out from their jobs, I pray that strength will enter into you now. I pray for you who will take place right now. In the in the name of Jesus, was on the verge of quitting, of throwing the tower of heaven up this morning. Strength is coming to you. Hope is coming to you. Restoration is coming back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For strengthening your people this morning. Glory to God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 The book of chapter 2. Verse 25. The Bible tells us that I, I will restore to you the years that the canker the caterpillar has taken away from you. I sense strongly that we should pray for restoration this morning. Whatever you have lost, whether it's in the material realm, whether it's in the realm of opportunity, you've lost a job. Glory to God. Get ready for restoration for a better yes, job. Jesus. Have you lost a job? Have you lost an opportunity? Oh. Has the door been closed against you that was duly yours? The scripture says in Jewel 2.25, you see, the years that the canker worm has stolen from you, the, the, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, he said, I will restore to you the years, glory to God. And, oh. and he said, my people will eat, my people will rejoice and be glad. I want us to pray now, Lord, restore me. Maybe you've lost a job. Maybe you've lost an opportunity. Maybe you lost a relationship. Whatever you lost, maybe it's your prayer love or your work with God. Say, Lord, restore it to me this month. Maybe you've lost your joy. Yeah. You've lost your joy. You, you are no longer as joyful as you used to be. And depression is setting in, in the place of joy. I wanted to tell the Lord this morning, Lord, this morning I put on the garment of joy. I put on the garment of praise. The spirit of heaviness is gone from me. Depression, leave me now. Come, open your mouth up and begin to to declare it now. Restoration. Lord, restore me. Restore my walk. Restore my faith. Restore my relationship. With you. Restore me this morning. Come on, open your mouth and begin to declare whatever you lost. Lord, you say in Jesus, whatever the hand and the caterpillar and the armor has 
tolling from us. You promise to restore into us. This morning, I pray for my brothers and my sisters, whatever they have lost, whatever opportunity, those who have lost job, I decree restoration this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, restoration for a better opportunity. Whatever you love, there is a restoration taking place. Whatever you love, receive it this morning now. Receive restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Never have left you. Whatever you love, by the power of the Holy Ghost, it is coming back to you in a better way, in a better form, in a better shape, in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever the devil stole from you, whatever the enemy took from you, we decree, put it back in the mighty name of Jesus. Put back the job, whatever joy that has been lost, depression has replaced the joy of the Lord. We eliminate depression now. But you don't go from the brethren. We receive joy. Hallelujah. We receive strength. We receive strength where we are weak this morning. In the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We thank you for restoration. And we praise you this morning. Hallelujah. We give you glory this morning. Hallelujah. For restoration that is taking place in our lives. Jesus, mighty name, hallelujah, amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here's what we're going to pray this morning. We're going to pray. Lord, we are asking, ignite, ignite the fire of revival. Now, oh, let me put it. Father, I am asking you for the fire of revival, of revival to burn brightly within my heart. Ignite in me a passion for your word. Give me the spiritual appetite for your word. Give me the hunger. Give me the appetite. Give me the desire. Restore my appetite for your word, whereby I will not be comfortable going the whole day without oh, yeah. hearing your word, without your word. Can you open up your mouth now and say, Father, ignite a passion in me for your word. Restore my hunger for your word. Yes. Restore my love. Restore my desire. Restore me when the desire has been stolen or is gone for your word. This morning, as we begin the fasting, restore Oh, my desire for your word. Ignite passion. Fire for your word. Give me first thirst for your word. Make me hunger for you again. Come on, come on. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, restore hunger for your word in me. Ignite lit a fire in me for your word. Give me the appetite. Restore the appetite for your word. Like never that I can't get enough of your word. That I hunger more for your word than my necessary food. I value your word. I restore your word. I, I, I desire your word like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus. That as we that into the second half of the year, you revive our desire. You restore our appetite. You restore our hunger. That anywhere we go, we find ourselves listening to your word, hunger for your word, desire for your word, appetite for your word. It's not lit a fire in our heart, oh God. That we crave for you, that we become word addict, we become addicted to your word, we become that we become like addicts, we become men hunger for cocaine, we hunger for your word. Like people crave for addiction, we crave for your word, we become 
addicted to your word. Hallelujah. This fasting restore our appetite. Restore our desire for your word in this season. So that we reverence your word. We elevate your word above entertainment, above social media, above anything else. Your word begins the rightful place in our life. We the word right in the in our hearts, in our lives, as the center of our worship, as the center of our lives. We respect your word, value your word like never before. In the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your words. Thank you for your people this morning. Thank you that we value you like never before. In the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, Lord, restore our love for your presence that we value being in your presence. You know, the book of Psalms, chapter 16, it, I think verse 11, it says, In your presence is the fullness of joy. In your presence, the fullness of joy. You see, in the Old Testament, you know, they could not come to God's presence, only Moses could approach God. And if anybody that is not Moses approached God or seek to come to God's presence, they died. In the Old Testament, if they seek to go before God, they die. But in the New Testament, after Jesus died and resurrected, if we stay away from his presence, we die. We wither. That's what happened. In the Old Testament, if they attempt to go before God, they die. But in the New Testament, if we stay away from his presence, we wither. John chapter 15, Jesus said, unless you abide in me, you know, unless you abide in me, if a branch does not abide in me, it withers, it dies away, it's disconnected from me. What Jesus is saying, if you don't spend time with me, you're going to begin to wither, you're going to begin to die, your spirit man will begin to wither and dry up. I want us to pray that in this passing of prayer, that we value God's presence, you know, the scriptures, uh, the um, uh, John 15, you read the whole chapter of John 15. Jesus said, uh, I, I am my I, I am the, the vine and 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 you are the branches. And unless you abide in me, you can do nothing. And and if and if a branch is disconnected, it withers away, it cannot bear fruit, it cannot see result. When we abide in Jesus, we abide in his word, we abide in his presence in prayer. That's how we produce resolve. And in John 15 verse 7, he said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. I want us to pray that our love for his presence is restored back to us. That we love spending time with him. We love being in his presence. We want to, the desire to spend more time with him. Can we pray now and say, Lord, he Ignite within me the desire for your presence. Yes. And when I get up every morning, I want to talk to you. I want to fellowship with you. I want to spend time in your presence. I want that to be so important to me, to be so that I'm no longer comfortable getting up every morning, walking out without spending time with him. No, I don't want to keep living like that for the rest of my life. But I want to get up and the first thing I do is to acknowledge him, is to fellowship with you, is to talk to you, is to Abide in your presence. Remember the scripture. And yes, read those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Psalm 91. They are those who dwell, those who dwell, those who make his presence their habitation, those who dwell there, they are the one that experiences all the benefits of Psalm 91. So let's pray now. Say, Father, restore my desire for your presence. Let me not live my life used to not having your presence in my life. Help me to be sensitive to your presence. Help me to cooperate with your presence. Help me to value your presence. Help me that I'm running to your presence every chance I can. Hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth and begin to pray right now. Father, we pray this morning that our love for your house, our love for your presence, our love for you grows stronger and stronger like never before in this season of our lives. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, that we value and we hunger for your presence like never before. Because in your presence is the fullness of joy. We abide in your presence. We abide in prayer. We abide in fellowship with you. We abide. We run to you, to your tabernacle. We run to your presence. We do not stay away from you, but we run to you for refreshing, for restoration in our lives, in the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. We value your word. We value your presence. We value your house like never before in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for doing a new thing in our lives. Thank you for renewing our strength. Thank you for restoring us. And we begin to thank God this morning for answering our prayers. Just open up your mouth. Let's begin to rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We magnify your holy name this morning. Lord, we thank you this morning. Praise and honor and worship and thanksgiving be given to you this morning in the supernatural name of Jesus for restoring us. Thank you for bringing us back to you. Thank you for refreshing, refueling us. Yes, we've come to the spiritual God station to be refueled. Hallelujah. For the second half of the year, in the name of Jesus, every weariness is gone from us. Every despondency, every despondency, go from us now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Let me pray for us. Father, you said in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 5, that blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Lord, we are fasting and praying and seeking your face because we hunger for, for your righteousness. We yeah. hunger for your word. We yeah, hunger for your presence. Yeah. We yeah. hunger for your house. We pray that you fill us afresh this morning. Where we've been empty, where we've run out, where we've burnt out, where we've grown weary and tired and worn out. We pray this morning that you refill us this morning in the name of Jesus. We've come to the spiritual God station so you can refill us up this morning. Refill us with hope. Refill us with faith. Refill us this morning with encouragement. Wherever we are bogged down this morning, we are lifted up. Refill us with joy this morning. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We are renewed. We are refreshed. We are restored this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for refueling us for the second half of the year. Thank you for renewing our strength for the second second yeah. of the yes, year. Yes. So we finished yes. 2024 strong. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, Lord. We finished strong. Yes. The excess revived, yes. vivacious, fervent yes. in the spirit, serving yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. We renew our yes. kingdom yes. service. Yes. We renew yes. our passion. Yes. We renew yes. our love. We yes. renew yes. our zeal yes. for you, yes. for your work and for your Thank house. You. We yes. give you the glory and we yes. give you the honor this morning. I pray for men and women who are in a place of discouragement that you encourage them today. Those who are going through depression, I take authority over the spirit of depression. I command depression to go away from you. I come against every panic attack in your life. Wherever the enemy is closing in on you, I rebuild that now. The yes. enemy closing in by telling you that there's no way out, that it's not going to happen, it will never come through, or that you've, you've done the worst thing in life. I rebuild that in your yes. life in the name of Jesus Christ. The enemy that want to bring condemnation to you, that will put you down and condemn you, I resist the spirit of condemnation this morning over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Father, thank you. Praise and glory and honor and worship and thanksgiving be given to you right now because we are free. Joy has been restored. Strength has been restored to us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And the believers say, Amen. 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 We have somebody joining us from thank Tampa, you, Florida, Sister Deborah. Hey, thank you for joining us, Sister Deborah from Amen. Tampa, Florida. We are glad you are able to join us. By the way, yes. we're going to continue this. If you are joining us from any state, I know Sister Alice is joining us from uh, uh, Antigua. Is it Antigua? Yes. Yeah, wherever you're joining us, you can always let us know. We'll give a shout out to you. And so we continue again. I'm going to have Dr. Adebi. He's going to lead us one of these morning prayer sessions as well. I'll let you know whether it's tomorrow or Wednesday. But in the morning, uh, we're gonna have, I'm going to have different people that are going to lead us. But I was just thinking about having Dr. Adebi to lead us in one of our, our morning sessions. So I'll speak with him and see if he's available tomorrow morning. Then he will lead us. But, uh, but I've given you some scriptures now. John chapter 15, read the whole chapter. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, read the whole chapter. And another one is uh, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. He said, your words were found and I ate them and your word was to me uh, joy and rejoicing of my heart. That's Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. So read Nehemiah, read the whole chapter of Nehemiah chapter 8. Because for 70 years, they were in captivity and they wandered, they wandered away from God, his word, his house. They did not value his house. They did not value his word. They did not value his presence. But then they began to value his house by building the house back up. They began to value his word by reading his word. They began to value his presence through prayer. And I believe that's what today, this morning prayer emphasis is about is God lifting us up, God helping us out. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Sister um, thank you. Alice. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. So, Pastor Larry, is there anything else, any announcement? Um, yes, just to remind everybody that uh, we're going to be meeting at church every evening this week from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. from Monday to Friday. And on Saturday, the evangelism team will be going out. This is a good, good, good week. We have been praying all week. So uh, the harvest field will be very, very fertile on Saturday. Amen. Amen. It's, um, that is the announcement. Thank you for the word this morning, Pastor. Good job. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Now, I don't know, does anybody have a, well, I don't know if we, we don't have time now, but maybe during this time, People have to go to work today. So, but maybe within the week, we'll make room for people who may have urgent prayer requests uh, in the morning so we can all gang up on it and pray over them. Hopefully, we can make such provisions tomorrow. Uh, maybe we can take about two or three prayer points during the morning time, and then we all pray over them. We pray for needs. We pray for uh, uh, area of needs that people may have. Or well, somebody's joining us from South Carolina, Sister Cheryl. Thank you for joining us from South Carolina. We love and appreciate you, Sister Cheryl. So, so send the link to your friends and your family, even people in other countries, send it to them in Nigeria, Jamaica, uh, UK, wherever your friends and loved ones are, send them the Zoom link that they can join us on the Zoom. So like Pastor Larry said, this evening, we meet in person in church. We come together. Ooh, yeah. uh, the Bible says in, in uh, Proverbs, uh, chapter 27 or 17, that iron sharpens iron. So some of you are working, I understand. But if you don't have to be at work till like 10 o'clock or later, but our prayer is from 7 to 9. So you could say, you know what, I'm going to go to church, but from there I'm going straight to work. It's one hour every evening. It's from 7 to 8. And by the way, if you come and you have no gas money, let us know. Let Pastor Larry know and we will make resources available for you to have gas. We may not can fill your tank, but we'll make sure you have a way to get back home. Who knows? We may can fill your tank, depending on the size of your tank or things like that. But, but I believe that. But don't allow gasoline to be 
a hindrance to you. And then pick other people up. You use your automobile to help other people to bring them. So we'll meet there by 7 p.m. Uh, this very evening. I don't think we are streaming it this evening. I'm, I don't. I don't think so. I think we answered that question yesterday. So. We love you guys so much. I am so excited. Thank God for yesterday's service. We have a phenomenal time of fellowship yesterday. What a what a great time it was uh, yesterday. I really, really uh, appreciate that. Amen. All right. Okay. Oh, good morning, girl. This morning. Oh, Dr. Graham, I remember you. Thank you. Yeah, you came to church before. Yeah, I remember that. Thank you for coming. We love and appreciate you. You are Minister Deborah's uh, guest. You came to church. So thank you for joining us today. We love you. We appreciate you all. The Lord go with you today. The Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. May he protect you and preserve you and 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 order your footsteps as you go out. Today. May you be at the right place at the right time to yes. meet the right people Thank today, you, this week, and even for the remainder of this year. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. We amen. love you guys so much. Now, if you have a testimony, make sure you let Brother Larry know so we can give you room to share your story, your testimony of what God has done, so we can celebrate and rejoice with you. Have a good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor, for the word. Have a good day, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Good day, Pastor. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day, Pastor. We love you. We appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah. Everybody. Everyone. Have, have a, a great day. morning at the same time. Have a great day, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Thank Hello, you. Good morning. God bless you. Bye. Thank you, we Sister Jacqueline love. Taylor. Thank Good you, morning. Pastor. God bless you. Hello, Jim. I have a great day. Yes, ma'am. Love ma you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, ma'am.